So we have been talking about hematology for a while and we have talked about the poikilocytes or abnormally shaped red blood cells. One of these poikilocytes are the schistocytes. Some people call it schistocytes, other people call it schistocytes. Potato, potato, I couldn't care less. Also, these schistocytes are known as helmet cells or fragmented cells. So you call it schistocytes, helmet cells, fragmented cells. They are describing the same exact cell, which is abnormal red blood cell. So schistocytes or helmet cells or fragmented cells are fragmented part of red blood cells. They are tiny pieces of RBCs. Their shape is irregular. They have usually two pointed ends. They can have a lot of shapes, such as a comma, such as a helmet, such as a triangle. They are microcytic, which means they are smaller than the normal red blood cell. There is no central pallor, and the normal red blood cell does have a central pallor. Their lifespan is less than 120 days. Why? Because abnormal cells get removed earlier by the spleen. It's called natural selection. So there are two mechanisms of schistocytes. Let's start with mechanism number one. We start with a nice blood vessel and some teeny tiny platelets coming together to aggregate. Then they will form a clot. Many platelets coming together forming a platelet clot. We call this primary hemostasis in normal scenarios. Then the fibrin fibers come and form a meshwork together with this platelet clot. We call this secondary hemostasis. But there's a difference. In normal conditions, you don't have a clot unless there is an injury, a trauma, like a paper cut. Now you start forming primary hemostasis and secondary hemostasis. That's not what we're talking about here. We're talking about abnormal conditions where these crazy platelets, for some crazy reason, they have decided to come together, aggregate, and form a clot and form a fibrin meshwork without any specific cause, and the exact cause is still not understood. So what happened to that nice red blood cell coming to pass through this blood vessel? It cannot pass because the space is so tiny. So the red blood cell will say, okay, I'll stay here. Um, I'm sorry, you can't. There is a blood flow coming. There is a force coming behind you. It will force you into this tiny space. So the red blood cell will get sheared into this schistocytes. That's first mechanism. Red blood cells cannot pass through this tiny space and get sheared into schistocytes. We call this what? We call this microangiopathic hemolytic anemia. Conditions where this happens include DIC, disseminated intravascular coagulation, HUS, which is hemolytic uremic syndrome, TTP, thrombotic thrombocytopenic purpura, and also HELP syndrome, which occurs in pregnant women. Here's your first mechanism, microangiopathic hemolytic anemia, DIC, TTP, HUS, and HELP. Now to the second mechanism. Instead of platelets and fibrin meshwork, you have a valve, such as your aortic valve. Red blood cell cannot pass through. Why? Because this valve is not normal. It's calcific. It's abnormal. So this red blood cell will get sheared into a schistocyte. It doesn't have to be the aortic valve, maybe the mitral. If you have a metallic mitral valve, Okay, you have replaced your normal valve with another artificial one. You'll get the same problems, which are schistocytes. We call this macroangiopathic hemolytic anemia or macrovascular traumatic hemolysis. Macro, why? Because your valve is something big. While in the previous scenario, we had micro because platelets are so tiny. Got it? Now, how to remember this crazy stuff? There is a nice song here. Schistocytes, helmet cells, fragmented cells. DIC, TTP, HUS, help me. Help you, why? Because my valve is calcified. These are all the causes. Here is microangiopathic, and here is the macroangiopathic. Schistocytes, helmet cells, fragmented cells. DIC, TTP, HUS, help me. Why? Because my valve is calcified. This was the story of the schistocytes, one of the 
poikilo sites and i'll see you in the next video please consider subscribing thank you